Hello everyone, my name is Will, and welcome back to Sprocket. So, uh, if you've seen the title, or you've seen the top of the screen right now, you're probably about as excited as I was when I saw this getting <laughs> shown around in the Sprocket official Discord. So this is a creation by... Ooh, didn't mean to clone that. But this is a creation by Aku in the official Sprocket Discord, and I'll probably leave a link in the description to the thread where you can learn how to do this. But as you can see... We have actual, unlike my old jank method, which I kind of, I don't want to say I came up with, but uh, I've used in a couple old videos. Um, this is proper suspension geometry editing geometric suspension nonsense. It's very cool. Uh, so, we're going to try and implement this into a vehicle, and then we're going to try and take on the brand new June scenario, which has just been reintroduced in the 0.2 beta. So, uh, with any further ado, let's get building. So, absolute full credit to the person who came up with this hydro pneumatic suspension. Uh, once again, their name in the official uh, Sprocket Discord is Aku. I will put a link to the Discord thread that you can go to. You can download uh, the template that I used to build this tank on from that thread. It's a little bit of a fiddle just to make sure that you don't break anything. I mostly left everything that was in there untouched. So there's a cannon, there's a, a turret mount, etc. I kind of just left those and used add-on structures to build on top of it, um, which is perfectly fine. Uh, it seems to to work okay in the end um but yeah just just to be warned this is not a particularly easy beginner thing to do if this is your first build in sprocket maybe hold off a little bit before you do your hydro pneumatic suspension but if you've got like 20 30 hours in the game absolutely feel feel comfortable doing it it's not that bad um <laughs> but yeah uh I was I was really excited when I saw this because obviously I'm I'm a huge fan as everybody is of hydro pneumatic suspension on tanks. I've made videos uh, on hydro pneumatic suspension on tanks before. We made a little Japanese tank with two way hydro pneumatic suspension, side to side, forward, backward. Uh, don't know if you guys remember that one. I don't think it did very well. We also made an S tank. That one did quite a lot better, uh, if I remember rightly. Maybe I'm completely mistaken. Maybe it was the other way around. But either way, today we're going completely different. Those two tanks were both set in roughly anywhere between the 60s and the 80s. This thing is set firmly in the 1940s. Uh, this is kind of Stug-like. Uh, I got inspiration from both the like SAV tank destroyers from Sweden, the Stug-4, and also a little bit of the Semavante um, M40 tank destroyers that Italy designed. Um, so there's a, there's a little bit of everything going on, but I think predominantly it looks like a Stug, um, because I used kind of a transmission style, uh, not transmission style, sorry, a, a, a wheel layout which is most similar to the Stug in the sense that it has overlaying road wheels, that's the main thing. Uh, but <laughs> it doesn't really make sense uh, in World War II for people to use hydro pneumatic suspension. It's likely that somebody could have done something along those lines. I wouldn't put it past a country being able to actually get a tech demonstration working for a vehicle like this. However, in terms of practical application on the battlefield, this thing has absolutely no place. And don't worry, I know that fully. Uh, this thing would be an absolute logistical nightmare. Uh, I mean, for one, interleaved road wheels get clogged up a fair amount, and interleaved road wheels in this case would require much more management than normal road wheels would because you've got more suspension arms. Simply put, you need to have more hydro pneumatic systems in your tank. Not the way to go if you were going to do hydro pneumatic suspension in World War II. It, there's, there's many, many reasons why this is not practical. But as I say, whenever I build any of these things, that's the joy of Sprocket. It doesn't need to be practical, because in this game, we don't have to worry about reliability and breakdowns. <laughs> um, but yeah... Uh, essentially what this allows me to do, and the reason that I decided to do this today rather than on another video, is this allows us to build a tank with a lower profile. Because the turret doesn't need to, or sorry, not the turret, the mantlet doesn't need to elevate up and down, the gun can essentially touch the top of the tank. Now, I don't make full utilization of that on this design just because there was a good place for the gun and it wasn't all the way on the roof. Uh, however, 
you can see where the gun is going to be mounted, and because it has no elevation, we're going to be able to get the full suspension travel of depression, so that's in this case 10 degrees, um, whereas if the gun was actually in there with the same length of, you know, uh, length of breach that I end up with this thing, likely I'd be looking at 5, maybe 4 degrees of gun depression. So this enables the tank to kind of much easier use uh, the elevation and depression profiles that it has available to it without having to worry about the physical constraints of where the gun can go. Uh, and furthermore, on top of that, if this was later in, uh, you know, the early Cold War uh, that this was designed, then this really, really helps with autoloaders as well. Autoloaders need, well, most autoloaders need the gun to be level with the breech, uh, or not the breech, but the ramming arm or whatever i i'm not a tank designer in real life this is just my vague understanding of it so if i am slightly wrong about these things feel free to let me know in the comments that's fine uh, <laughs> um but the gun needs to be level in order for the shell to get rammed in by the autoloader and having that mounted on your tank's hull in a permanent fixture and just moving the entire suspension means that the entire loading mechanism moves with the gun and you don't need to reset back to level in order to fire, which I believe uh, the French Leclerc has to do, if I'm not mistaken. That tank has an autoloader and every single time it fires with any elevation or depression, you'll see its gun quickly reset to level and then return to where it was. Obviously, this isn't too bad of a thing in you know, modern tanking, because you have um, computer systems to, you know, level that gun back to where it was exactly. Um, and a lot of modern tanks, to be entirely honest, don't use autoloaders, so most tanks don't have to worry about this. Um, but the Swedish wanted an autoloader because they wanted their tank, and the reason I bring up the Swedish, if you don't know, the Swedish are basically the only people to attempt this seriously in real life. There's some other attempts out there, but the Swedish have really the craziest attempt, which is the STRV S tank series of, of vehicles. And the idea behind this was that essentially if they had crew limitations, which they normally would operate with more, but they could theoretically operate with one crew member, which means they needed an autoloader and they needed that crew member to be fully, like, able to focus on other things than loading and firing the gun. Well, I mean, he'd still have to focus on firing the gun, otherwise you're probably going to miss the target, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't even remember where this original point was coming from, but anyway... Um, S-Tanks are really cool. If you ever get the opportunity to go to, uh, I, I, to be fair, the only one I know of is in Bovington Tank Museum, but that's because I've been there a lot of times. Uh, they have an S-Tank. Really, really cool piece. Uh, absolutely amazing piece of technology, and I would love to drive one. I'm just saying. I think all of us would. I know it's not going to happen, but I would want, I want to. I want to drive an S-Tank. Um... But yeah, in this case, uh, we're using it to just kind of slightly lower our profile while having a little bit more gun depression. So the benefits of the hydro pneumatic system in this tank are slightly lower than that in other vehicles. Um, that autoloader thing also applies, by the way, to uh, oscillating turrets and, like, the AMX-13. Uh, the reason that that had an oscillating turret was it allowed the autoloader to stay level with the gun. A lot of the time, when people try these really, really weird designs, like oscillating turrets, S-tanks, it comes down to one big design feature, and it just so happens that in the Swedish and the French's case, it happened to be autoloaders, um, because autoloaders are weird, and people are cheaper, so a lot of tanks don't do that. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, we're getting there with our design now. Uh, we're nearly done with the overall shape of this thing. As you can tell, it's got quite the Stug profile. Um, at this point in time, I was not 100% on the mantlet. It is obviously a very unusual mantlet, just going side to side. So there's not a huge amount of examples of this with a large caliber gun in the world. The only one that I can really think of is the one... Uh, on the L33 Caro, Caro, Caro Veloce, Veloce, um, which is, yeah, I mean, it does go up and down, but it's also kind of got this big curved uh, platform that kind of maybe would have worked, um, but I just, yeah, I don't know, it didn't feel right when you put a 75mm gun on, like, it works with a 20mm gun, but a 75mm gun, 
not so much. Uh, so I basically just made a hole in the front of the tank which the gun sticks out of. Uh, and as you can see, it can actually move quite a significant amount left and right. We've got 15 degrees either side of um, traverse on this gun, which is quite impressive to be entirely honest. Uh, normally when I do a casemate tank destroyer, I'm struggling to get like 7 degrees either side. Uh, just, well, possibly because I build my tanks too small sometimes, but uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously because we're taking on the dune scenario we slap on a nice desert 10 uh paint scheme and give it some ammunition uh, and now it's time to basically just get the internals working for this thing so i didn't put too much work into um the internals of this thing because it is a little bit silly inside it doesn't really make much sense so uh, we're probably gonna skip that and we're gonna head straight to the actual playing because otherwise you guys are gonna go oh this doesn't make sense internally i know i know it doesn't make sense internally just leave me be but anyway yes let's go take on dunes shall we Okay, and here is the finished product. I've called it for now the HS01. I don't know. It says Hydro Pneumatic Suspension 1. Uh, I'm not very good with names, but this is the tank that we've come up with here. And as you can see, it's not particularly fitting to the era that Hydro Pneumatic Suspension came out in. But I wanted to kind of find a middle ground between having a tank that would fit in the Dune scenario and having a tank that would make sense to have hydro pneumatic suspension which is kind of difficult but as you can see we've got quite a lot of tilt angle that we can put on this thing and in the other direction we've got about the same if not a little bit more they yeah that's a little bit too much i, I maybe need to limit that a bit more uh, but we also have a 75 millimeter gun with about i think it's about 120 millimeters of penetration and as you can see aiming is pretty easy uh it's a little bit off sometimes from where the gun actually is aiming but it's pretty good on the whole and it's definitely doable to aim with this thing as you can see the further out you go the further off the aim of re aiming reticle is kind of but generally speaking you can make it work and uh, in theory I think we should have a pretty good time fighting the enemies in dunes. Uh, so we have on the front here a fair bit of armor. It's nothing crazy, but as you can see, it's up to about 100 millimeters in areas, as low as about 60 in areas. This bit is obviously a weak spot because that's where our gun is. Um, so in theory, fingers crossed, touch wood, we should be okay. <laughs> Okay, so here we are on dunes, and this level is slightly different to how it used to be. It used to be like a big jewel in the desert, now it's uh, kind of an ambush scenario. So you can see we've got an enemy, enemy column down here, and we have a bit of an advantageous position over them. We need to ambush them, take out 75% of their column. Now, uh, the AI is also a little bit more likely to react like a human to ambushes, so while my allies kind of just charge over the hill here, we're going to try and get a position a little bit more advantageous to us down the hill uh, and hopefully we can pull off a little bit of an ambush and put our hydromatic suspension to the best use we can uh, i don't think this guy knows we're here so we'll use that to kind of hopefully take him out i don't exactly it's kind of hard to tell when they're actually dead but they have increased spalling on these shots so i'm gonna guess that he's probably out for the count and that looks like he might be as well. I'm going to put another one into his turret just to make sure. Uh, and then we've got what used to be the Allen. It's now called the Dunes Heavy. I think that just went clean through and out the other side. Uh, let's go see if we can take out his engine here. That's probably a good chance. We need more depression. So push up a bit more. Okay, he's immobilized. Uh, and we'll just put one under his turret. See if we can take out the turret crew. He's still rotating, which is a little bit ominous. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where his gunner is, so hopefully that's done the job. He definitely doesn't look like he's moving anymore. Um, right, my allies have taken an absolute beating here, but luckily the enemy column I don't think knows where I am. So we might be able to make up for where my AI have fallen behind a little bit here. Uh, can we get enough depression to get over this hill? I think we can. That's a not not an amazing shot, I can't lie. 
that's a little bit better. Uh, he's probably going to be out in a, for the count in a moment once the uh, fire catches up with him. We're going to just dip back into cover and let the fire take those guys. Um, and fingers crossed, the other people in the column aren't going to be too prepared for me as well. Uh, they reacted pretty quickly, to be fair. So now, if you're behind an enemy tank, they have a lower chance of noticing you immediately. Uh, it's something like 50% chance. That guy is still very much aware of me. Hopefully my armor holds up. That's 75% of the column taken out. There we go! <laughs> we have defeated Junes. Uh, there's still enemies that can shoot, though. So we're going to try and take these last few guys out. I think that's probably him done. Uh, I mean, he's on fire, but he's still shooting back. That didn't look like it penetrated. Uh, that did, though. Hello. Please. Come on. That should be good. I think think that looks like a killing blow to me. Uh, I can't check anymore because we can't tab between vehicles. But um, we have caused quite the bit of chaos in the desert today. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think any of my allied tanks survived that. So this guy, he's clearly out of it. I don't know how well the AI would have worked with the, uh, the, the hydro pneumatic suspension here. Yeah, they're all out. It's just me. Uh, so <laughs> it might be the fact that the AI can't really aim with it. But luckily, we were more than capable of taking out this column alone. And uh, yeah. All in all, 100% success. Uh, I am kind of surprised by that. So, do you like the tank? Did you like the video? Please have a like, comment, and or subscribe if you did. And let me know in the comments if you want to see me do anything more with this hydro pneumatic suspension concept. Fingers crossed we get a couple more scenarios soon. Obviously, we've got Junes back now, which is going to be awesome for content. It's been a long time since I actually got to take in uh, my tanks into some kind of a battle, which I'm really, really looking forward to going forwards. But let me know what you want to see next. Let me know what you would do if you had access to this hydro pneumatic suspension system. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the future. Bye bye. And as always, a huge thank you to my YouTube super supporters Paloma, Marlon Gwecken, Cruiser25, Cody Fox, Peter Holmes, Peter Seifert, Camgem135, Stug3, Terra, and all of my regular supporter tier supporters too. I said supporter too many times there.